What does celebration look like? What, is, what does celebration sound like? Come on, what does it feel like? What, is, what, is, what does it take to celebrate in a great way? And David danced. Everybody say danced. Yeah. He, he danced before the Lord with all his might, wearing a priestly garment. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts. Everybody say shouts. Yeah. Shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. Revelation 3 verse 7 says this, write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true, the one who has the key of David. Say key of David. Key of David. Watch. It says, what he opens, no one can close, and what he closes, no one can open. Let's pray. God, we get into your word today, God. You're going to speak to us. And Lord, I thank you, God, for what you're about to, to speak into our lives, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everybody says... Amen. You may be seated today. If, if you could sit down, if you could sit down with, with uh, someone today, if you could sit down, someone who's very successful, and, and just sit down for them for one hour to, to learn their secrets to success, who would that be? You know, some of you say, oh, I, I sit down with Jesus. Well, you should be sitting down with Jesus every day in his word. Come on, somebody. You should be in prayer every day. So Jesus is not part of this you know, question. Just think about a historic figure or someone current, right, that you could sit with. You know, who would you sit with? Maybe, maybe you'd sit with an athlete, man. Imagine if you could sit down with someone like Tom Brady or, or LeBron James or some, someone who's great at what they do in the, in the field of athletics. If you could just sit down and ask them, you know, what is the key, right, to your success? Or, or maybe it would be an artist. Maybe you'd say, no, I'd like to meet a musician, or I'd like to meet a singer, a performer, an entertainer, someone you, you really admire. You know, I, I said this in the first service. I know my, my daughter, Georgiana, would probably say, I'd, I'd want to meet uh, Taylor Swift, you know. She's a little Swifty, right? Some of, some of the young ladies are already nodding their head. How do you write your songs? How do you do all that? You, you'd want to meet and find the secrets to their success. Or how about if you could sit down with, like, Elon Musk, right? Imagine if you could sit down with Elon Musk and just say, man, how, how did you do all this? You, you, you built this career. You built this, this enterprise, this literally like an empire, you know, business empire that's affecting the world. Whether you like him or you don't, you, there's no denying that there's something really genius about him, right? Imagine if you could sit down with, with a spiritual leader, maybe a pastor or, or a, a speaker that you really admire, an author. I don't know. But imagine that you could sit down and say, okay, what is the key to your success. If you could just share with, uh, with me the key to your success, I think that would be invaluable. And I think as we look in the scriptures, we find, we find someone who, who was probably one of the most impactful characters in the Bible. We could talk about Abraham, and we could talk about Moses, and we can, all these people are super impactful, but I think about, about, about when I think about someone who's had impact, that they're still talking about his life today, I think about David, I think about King David. And about the impact that he's had on our society. The impact that he's had on, on, on our spiritual walk with God. The legacy, the, the things that he left, the success that he had. Now, some of you may, may say, well, Pastor George, yeah, but he messed up. And, 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 and he, he did some bad things. He, he messed up later on in life. And he hurt his family. And there were some bad things that he did. And there's no denying that. But here's the thing is, it's not said of any, anybody else in Scripture about but David, it says that he was a man after God's own heart. It's not, said, it's not said about anybody else except for David. He didn't go tell anybody else, hey, I'm going to establish your family forever. Like, I'm going to build your house forever. Like, like, like God came to David and he says, because you want to build me a house, I'm going to establish your house forever. So think about the impact that David had, right? He was a highly successful man. He was a highly successful man. And the Bible tells us again, I'm going to read Revelation 3 verse 7. It says this, write this letter to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. And this is the message from the one who is holy and true. The one who has the key of David. In other words, there was something on David's life that allowed him to experience success on a whole different level. There was something that David had on his life. That caused him to have victory. That caused him to walk in blessing. That caused him to walk in favor. That while others were failing, while others were fading, come on, David was thriving. 
While others were fading and falling off the wayside, the Bible teaches us that David succeeded and had great success. Can I get an amen today? There was something on David's life that was a key. The Bible tells us in Revelation 3 verse 7, it says that there's the key of David. It was the key to his success. It was the key to his victory. It was the key to his favor. It was the key to greatness in his life. And so how many of you today, if I could tell you that you could have that key and you could have what David had if you do what David did, how many of you would say, give me the key? Okay, I got one person right here. Hello, is anybody in the house today? Come on, I need you to wake up today. I need you to give God a praise today. Come on, amen. I need you to listen. I need you to listen attentively because I'm about to challenge you. I'm about to challenge you to rethink some of the things that you're doing. And you, you're not here by accident. You're not here by coincidence. But at the end of this service, if you will do what David did, you, you can begin to have what David had. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but there's no, there's no shackles on the child of God. You're not called to live in captivity. You're not called to live in limitation. You're not called to live a, 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 less, a life less than extraordinary. You're called to live an overcoming life. Somebody give God praise today. Somebody praise him like you're going to live a life of victory. Somebody praise him like you're going to experience breakthrough today. If you will do what David did, if you can get that key of David, you can have what David had. The Bible says it was a key on his life. And the key, listen, the key would open doors that no one could shut. And then the, the key would close doors that no one could open. Come on, when you have the key of David, come on, you walk in the favor of God. You walk in the blessing of God. And guess what? No enemy, no opposition can stop you from walking in the blessing. Why? Because they don't got the keys. You have the keys. You got keys. What do keys represent? Keys represent authority. In other words, when David had these keys, this key to his success, the key to his victory, the keys to his favor, can, can, can I tell you something? It meant that he was a man of authority. He wasn't just a king in the, in the physical realm, but he carried authority on his life because there was, a, there was keys. Whoever has the keys has authority. What do keys do? It represents not only authority, it, re, it represents access. When you have keys, you can get into places that, that, you, that others can't get into. You get into places, you get into rooms, you get into conversations, you get into areas of promotion, you get into places of blessing. Why? Because you have a key to open a door that unlocks a door that grants you access. Like, how did you get that job? How did you get that promotion? How did you get that house? You want to know why? Because I got the key. But you, but you haven't finished school. But you don't have a degree. But you, you did this. It doesn't matter. I got the key. I got the key. The key says, I open the door and no one can shut it. But the Bible says that he closes the door and he locks the door. Come on. And nobody can open it. That's, that's what keys represent. Authority, access. But keys also represent things that you can turn on and things that you can turn off. Right? Like, you want to drive my car? You need the keys. You want to turn on the vehicle? You need my keys. Without my keys, you can't turn on the car. Right? There are things that God wants to turn on in your life, things that he wants to start in your life, things that he wants to ignite in your life. You need the keys. You want God to begin to do something new in your marriage, in your family, in your finances. You want God to begin to stir new things. You want God to jumpstart you. You need keys. Without the keys, you will never, listen, you will never be stirred up. You can ask and you can beg and you can cry. And, and listen, until you get the keys, you'll never have anything stirred up in your life. So if I were to tell you that if you did what David did, you can have what David had, how many of you would today would say, Pastor, just give me the keys. Just give me the keys. Give, give it to, okay. So what is the key? What, was the, what is the key of David? And a lot of people have different beliefs about what the key of David is and, and what it represents. But I'm going to tell you what I believe, what I see in Scripture, what is the key of David. 
I believe it, it boils down to one thing. There was one thing that David did above all others. There was one thing that David did that nobody in the history of the world up until in his lifetime and before, no one did this like David did it. And you want to know what it was? Here it is. You ready? Here's the key that we're talking about today. This is the key that's going to stretch you. It's the key to your breakthrough. It's the key to your victory. It's the key to your blessing. Are you ready? Somebody say, Pastor, give me the key. All right, here it is. You ready? It's the key, the key, the key of praise. Everybody say praise. 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 Nobody praised God the way David did. Nobody did. Nobody was willing to to make himself the fool like David was. The the, the scripture we just read in 2 Samuel chapter 6, it says that he came into the temple. And when he came into the temple, he was dancing. He was spinning. He was jumping. He was shouting. And, and, and it says that, that, that he was spinning wildly like a, like a tornado. He was dancing. And, and, and when he got home, his wife criticized him and said, you look like a fool in front of everybody. You know what his answer was? He goes, I'll even look more foolish. I'll be even more undignified. He didn't care what his family thought. He didn't care what the people thought. He didn't care what his wife thought. He, didn't, he wasn't limited and he wasn't affected by the criticism of others. He says, I will, I will praise God. I will bless the Lord. I will sing to him. I will dance. I will shout. Come on, somebody give God a praise. It was the praise on his life. It was the praise that emanated from his life. Think about this for just a moment. There was nobody else in scripture that praised the Lord the way David did. David single-handedly wrote 73 psalms in the book of Psalms. David was a skilled musician, the Bible says. David was passionate about his praise. David learned to praise God in all seasons. David understood the importance of praise. You see, I believe that if we will learn to praise God like David did, we too can have what David had. Amen. If we will learn to praise God. I want to talk to you about raising the praise in your life. About raising the temperature. I remember growing up, we didn't have a heater at home. Our heater was the stove. Anybody ever live that? Yeah, the stove. Turn on the stove. We get up in the morning, go stand around the gas stove like that. That was our heater. And guess what? My mom would turn it up a little bit, you know, turn it on, and then I turn it up a lot. And while I was at it, I put a little weenie in the fire so I could eat some hot dog. Come on, somebody. See, I believe it's time for us to turn up the temperature. I I believe it's time for us to raise the temperature, the thermostat a little bit, to say, listen, I know I've been praising at this level. I know I've been praising at this level, but I believe that God is calling us to another level of praise, amen, to another level of praise, of celebration. Because if we will praise like David praised, we will have what David had. It's the key. It's the key to your victory. It's the key to your blessing. It's the key to your miracle. It's the key to the favor of God on your life. If you will pray, come on, somebody, give. God, a praise this morning. You got to raise the praise. You got to raise the praise. So let me give you a couple of things to think about. Because by the end of this, everyone in this room is going to raise the praise. Some of you are like, what? Get ready. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready. Come on, look at your other neighbor. That, other, that neighbor's not listening to you. Come on, to the other neighbor, say, get ready. Come on, get ready. If you don't want to say it in English, say it in Spanish. Prepárate, prepárate. Eso. Come on, somebody. Here we go. Watch this. You got to raise the praise. Number one, here's the first point. If we're going to raise the praise, we have to learn this. Number one, praise flows from the heart. Listen to what it says in Psalms 103, verse 1. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. With my whole, with my whole, with my whole, I will praise the Lord with my whole Every, everything starts in your, in your heart. Praise is no exception. Praise flows from the heart, right? Your gratitude, your worship, your generosity, your praise uh, flows from your heart. That's why the enemy attacks your heart so much during the week. Because if he can get your heart distracted, if he can get your heart, you know, uh, feeling a certain way, it will stop your praise, Think about this for just a moment. When your heart is bitter, you can't praise God. When your heart is offended, you can't praise God. When your heart is worried, you can't praise God. When your heart is filled with anxiety, you can't praise God. 
It stops you from praising because, because praise is not a performance. Praise is not a concert. Praise is not a spectacle. Praise is not about you. It's about what God has done for you. It's an expression. Come on, somebody. Praise, praise starts from the heart, and that's why the enemy tries to affect your heart so much. Because if he can affect your heart from Monday through Saturday, when you get here on Sunday, you, you can't lift up a praise. You're just a spectator. You're watching. You're watching everybody else. And if you're not careful while you're watching, you begin to criticize everybody else. You better be careful with that because when they criticize, when his wife, when David's wife criticized him for the way he prays, guess what happened? She became sterile and she, had, she never had children in her life. You better be careful that you're not praising, uh, criticizing people who are praising because God will cause you to be unfruitful. Come on, somebody. Like those people out there jumping in there like, like fools. No, we're the sane ones. When, 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 you're, when you're sitting there criticizing or you're sitting there just watching and not engaging, what happens is, is there's something wrong with your heart. Something that's not right with your heart because when your heart is right, when your heart is pure, guess what? When it's time to praise the Lord, you're going to go, come on, somebody, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I'm going to clap. I'm going to jump. I'm going to shout. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Why? Because my heart is right. If you can't praise the Lord, it's not, it's not a music issue. It's not a volume issue. It's not a church issue. It's a heart issue. Come on, somebody. The Bible tells us that it's our heart that determines our praise because that's where it comes from. This is why we've got to keep our heart pure. So then how do we keep our heart pure? Do you know that prayer does not purify your heart? Prayer, when I pray, it does not purify my heart. Prayer connects my heart to God. But you want to know what purifies our heart? It's the word of God. Listen to what it says in John 15 verse 3. It says, you already have been pruned and purified by the message, by the word I have given you. He's talking to his disciples. He says, what is it that purified your heart? It's the word I gave you. It's the word of God that purifies your heart. John 17, 17 says this, make them, talking about the disciples, make the disciples holy, pure, by your truth, teach him your word, which is true. So the word purifies our heart. See, we last week, Pastor Rosie preached an amazing message on, on ready to grow. Ready, set, grow, right? It's not ready, settle. It's ready, set, grow. It's ready, set, go. Right? And so sometimes we think, well, the word of God grows me. It does grow you, but another thing that the word of God does is it purifies you. It purifies your heart. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26. It says, Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for the church to make her holy and clean. Watch. Washed by the cleansing of God's word. So what purifies us? It's the word of God. When I read the word of God on Monday and on Tuesday and on Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, and I get to church on Sunday, my heart has been through the filtration process, through the purification process. And so when I get to the house of God, my heart is, is pure. My motives are pure. My thoughts are pure. And guess what? When it's time to praise, I'm ready to praise. Why? Because I'm in the zone. I'm in the flow. I'm in the stream. My heart is ready to go. But if you haven't done that, but if you haven't been in your word, you show up with all your garbage. You show up to church with all the contaminations that have attached itself to you. Like the barnacles on a boat. The things that attach itself to the hull. The things that, that, that attach to itself. You got to go down there. You got to scrub that thing off because if you don't scrub it off, it impedes the flow, the proper flow of that boat. And if you're not careful, watch this. You, you go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you haven't read the word. You haven't put the word of God in you. Your heart's not ready. Your heart's not prepared. Your heart's not expecting. Your heart's been contaminated. Your heart's been hurt. Your heart's angry. Your heart's bitter. Your heart's all is distracted. And then you come to church on Sunday, and you say, Pastor, give me a word because I need a word. Wait a minute. You should have got a word on Monday. You should have got a word on Tuesday. You should have got a word on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And when I get that word and my heart is pure, 
guess what? I show up to church on Sunday, and I'm like, come on, I'm ready. I'm ready to praise God. Come on, I'm ready to shout. I'm ready to sing. I'm ready to clap. I'm ready to give God glory. Why? Because my heart is in the right place. See? Some of you right now, you're not listening to me. That's okay. That's fine. You don't have to listen to me. But don't complain when your life's a mess. Don't complain while you're still crying for a breakthrough. I'm giving you your breakthrough right now. I'm trying to give you the key to your breakthrough. And so you're like. I'm 33. We probably have another 20 men. Come on, somebody. And then you wonder why you're miserable. And then you wonder why you're depressed. And then you wonder why you're anxious. And then you wonder why you worry all the time. You're stressed out. You want to know why? Because your heart isn't right. Your heart isn't ready to get your breakthrough yet. And it's better to blame the pastor, the preacher, the church, the leaders, the life groups. Because guess what? You want us to do all the heavy lifting for you. My friend, it's time for you to grow up. And it's time for you to start praising God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody praise him. I got to get my heart right, right? Here's the second thing. Here's point number two. Praise must be expressed. Everybody say expressed. There's an expression. In other words, it has to be expressed. All right? A couple years ago, my son and I were sitting on the living room sofa watching the World Series. Please don't hate. Keep your, keep your, your criticisms to yourself, especially you, Isaiah. I'm talking to you over there because he's a, I just, Lord, in Jesus' name. We were sitting in the sofa watching game six of the World Series. The Houston Astros, don't hate. I'm from Houston. That's my team. Don't, don't say anything else. Just listen, okay? Because ushers get ready to get people out of here, all right? <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were in the seventh inning, I believe. It was around there, and it was a tight game. And, and Phillies brought in their, one of their relievers, one of their fastest pitch relievers they had, hardest throwers, and our ace, our slugger was at the plate, and Jared and I were watching. The game was tense, and I said to myself, if that pitcher will throw that 100-mile, because he was a hard thrower, and I said, if he throws that 100-mile-an-hour uh, pitch right down the center, if Jordan Alvarez, our, our slugger, if he just puts the bat on it, this game is over. And I'm, sat, I'm sitting there with Jared, and we're watching the game of the World Series, and the pitcher winds up, and this pitch, he throws a 100-mile-an-hour fastball right down the middle. What a mistake. And, 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 and Jordan puts a bat on it, and as soon as, as it, it hit the bat, you heard the sound of the bat cracking, and the ball traveled 460 feet dead center. Home run. And you want to know what Jared and I did? We sat there calmly and just started. Like, <laughs> High five. <laughs> That's not what we did. And <laughs> we jumped and we shouted. We got crazy. It didn't matter. Our dogs freaked out for a moment. The cat ran to its room. Come on. We were jumping and shouting. Why? Be watch this. Because there was something that was stirring on the inside. And when, when it happened, when, when the breakthrough. Oh, there it is. When the breakthrough happened, watch this. Watch this. What was on the inside had to come out. Come on, somebody. Praise demands an expression so watch how do we express praise we do it biblically what does the bible say i'm going to give you some things that we can do to praise god number one we praise god with the instruments everybody say instruments it says praise him with a soft no it doesn't say that does it praise him with a with a what a blast how many of you know that a blast is not soft it's loud it says Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine. We're not going to talk about tambourines. Because tambourines, how many of you know there's nothing worse than a person that doesn't know how to play the tambourine that plays a tambourine? <laughs> I 
There's nothing worse than a person who knows how to play the tambourine. And they're like, ch -ch 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 like, mm. God bless the tambourine players. We are a tambourine free zone. We will confiscate your tambourine. But it says pra praise him with a tambourine. Praise him. Watch. Praise him with the dance. Praise him with the string and flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Jared does a good job of that. Come on. Praise him with the loud clanging cymbals. So we praise God with instruments. Now, I know that not everybody is able to praise God with instruments. I get it. So you need a certain skill to be able to play on a team. But, but this is what we use. This is why we use instruments. The Bible tells us, number two, we, we praise him with clapping. The Bible says, Psalms 47, verse 1, come, everyone, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands if you can. Come on, praise him. Uh, that, like, that's like a golf clap. Come on, really. Can you give God a really good clap? Come on, amen. All right. Mm. Okay, we clap. We clap. Number, number three, we, we, we praise him with a, with a shout. Watch this. It says, Psalms 100, verse 1, shout with joy to the Lord in all the earth. Some people, well, pastor, that's just not my personality. I'm not, I'm not a shouter. I don't, I don't express myself that way in church. It's just, you know, I'm a more reserved person. I've never really been someone to lift my voice and to shout. Really? You had no problem shouting at the person in the freeway? Really? You had no problem shouting at your kids? Come on. Really? You don't have problems shouting at your team when they messed up Dallas Cowboys right here? You have no problem with shouting when, it, when, the, when the time demands it. But all of a sudden you lose your voice. You lose your ability to shout. When you get to church, well, I believe the church should be a reverent place in the house of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says... It says, make a joyful noise. And, and I think this is important to understand that th there are some people who have a really great gift to sing. And others, they have a great gift to shout. <laughs> to make a noise. Shout. The Bible says, make, it says, shout with joy. Not shout for pain. Not shout with anger. But to shout with joy for what he has done. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says, the Bi let me take it up another level. You ready? The Bible says to praise him, watch with dancing. And when I say dancing, I'm not talking about the kind that you do in the club, like, mm -tsh, mm -tsh, mm -tsh, mm -tsh, mm -tsh. come on, somebody. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry, mom. I love you, mom. She's watching right now. The Bible says, Psalms 149, verse 3, it says, praise his name with dancing. Everybody say dancing. They're like, oh, well, Pastor, I just, I think it's just for me in the house of God. It should be a holy place. And wait a minute, dancing is scriptural. Now, now, dancing is not the way you would think, like at the at the at the club or the you know the 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 thing that you do maybe in a in a in a wedding necessarily or you know where you're going over there. You're like, oh yeah, come on, somebody. You're like, oh, you're doing a little cumbia dance, whatever you want to do, or a little you know whatever, right? Bitty bitty bomb bomb. I don't know. Watch. Here's the thing about dancing. You ready? I'm going to teach you something. Dancing, when it's done right, and it's done with the right heart, in the right context, you have to understand that dancing always stirs up something in the supernatural. Did you know that? Why do you, listen, watch this. You go to the tribes in Africa, into the, into the remote tribes, and they have witch doctors, and what do they incorporate into their ceremonies? Dancing. You want to know why? Because there are certain dances that rise up demonic spirits. Watch. You ready? That's why you have no business in the club. Because what you are doing is you are conjuring up a demonic spirit of lust and fornication and adultery on your life. Like, oh, why do I feel this way? Because you just conjured up something on your life. Hello. Hello. Come on. Anybody there? Oh, no, Pastor, that's crazy. No, it's not. It's not crazy. 
You try dancing with somebody from the opposite sex and you start getting too close and all of a sudden, things start getting stirred up in you. And all of a sudden, that person, oh, you look good, girl. <laughs> oh. That's not the dancing God is talking about here. The dancing that we're talking about is the one that David did before the Lord. It's the, it's the jumping. It's the leaping. It's the spinning. It's the, it's the exuberance. It's the joy. But that, that jumping too, that dancing in the spirit, it also con it stirs up something. It stirs up the Holy Spirit. It stirs up the presence of God. It does. Yeah. So, so why can't we jump in the house of God? Well, again, well, Pastor, you know, I just, I don't know. It's, it's never been me. It's like, I don't know. I can't. You mean you can't jump? <laughs> jump. <laughs> Too hard? Uncoordinated? <laughs> jump. <laughs> you know, if you say, well, my knees, well, then just like. Praise the Lord. Dance. Huh? There's nothing wrong with it. It's scriptural. We, we, we dance. We, we, we worship him with the shout, the dance, the clapping, the instruments. We worship him with the song. Psalms 96 verse 1 and 2. It says, sing a new song to the Lord. It says, sing a new song to the Lord. And it goes on to say right there, it says, let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Sing to the, the Lord. Praise his name. Sing a new song. Some of you, some of you, you need to quit singing the old song. I'm broke. I'm hurting. I'm betrayed. I'm fearful. I'm anxious. You keep on replaying that song. I've been betrayed. I've been hurt. I've been disappointed. I've been discouraged. I've been robbed. I've been stolen from. Sounds like a country song. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you start singing a new song. I'm blessed. I'm favored. I have courage. I have victory. God is good. God has healed me. God has saved me. Come on, somebody give God a praise today. Oh, this, this, this is good, huh? It's going to get better. Because here's point number three. Praise is God's invitation. Praise is God's invitation. Listen to what it says in Psalms 22, verse 3. It says, Yet you, God, are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Another translation says, you dwell. God, you dwell in the praises of your people. David, listen to this. David learned to invite God's presence while he watched the sheep. While he was doing his thing, he learned to, to, to invite God into, into his situation. Listen. We need to quit inviting the wrong things into our lives. Fear and doubt and anxiety and worry and stress and drama. Man, drama lives in your home. Drama lives in your relationship. Fear lives in your home. Fear lives in your mind. You need to quit inviting those things and allowing those things to, to dwell in your life, to dwell in your home. You, it's time for you. Listen, it's time for you to invite God into your situation. It's time for you to say, God, step into my struggle. Step into my trial. Come on, somebody. Step into my mess. Step into my sickness. Step into my needs, God. Because when I praise him, God shows up. It's not to say that I don't feel these things. And I don't experience these things. Is that I'm not going to live in those things. I'm not going to keep those things. Some of you, you, you need, a, you need, a, you need a, to, to get to the place where you're no, longer, you're no longer inviting that into your home. Those bad things. You're inviting, you're inviting God into your situation. Well, how do you do that? By praising him. Yes. Isaiah 61 verse 3. It says to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. Ashes represents death. Beauty for death. An oil of joy for sadness or mourning. A garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Some of you, you've been putting on the same old garment. A garment of fear. A garment of worry. A garment of stress. A garment of, of just anxiety. And you just, you put it on every day. In fact, you've probably never taken it off. God says, I've given you a garment of praise. 
Put a praise on your life. Put praise on your life. Praise him. Praise him for what he's done. Praise God. It says that he's, he's done this for us. See, a lot of times, a lot of times you, you've, you've, for many of you, many of you, you're kind of new to our church. And maybe you've joined the last two or three years or, or, or more, even more recently. But you don't know what Lifeway used to be like years ago. You don't know, not that we didn't praise God, we did. We had a band and we would praise God. It was, it was coming from a sincere heart. But you come into the church now and you think, oh, that stuff at the front, that's just for the young people. It's for the young adults. It's for those who have good knees. <laughs> I'm not, not me. I can't, I can't go up there. That's not me. That let, let the young people be young. But you don't know how this started. You don't know the price that was paid to create this. You don't know the sacrifice that was paid. You don't, you don't, know, you don't know the step of faith that, was, that, was, that it took to create what we have here. It didn't start with young people up here. It didn't start with children up here. It didn't start with, you know, oh, oh, oh there's all these young adults that just they're on fire for God. They didn't just show up here and start jumping in debt. No, no, no. You want to know who it was? It was three men. Three adult, grown adult men. Who said, I'm not staying in my chair, I'm going to walk up there and I'm going to praise God. And if I have to look undignified, I'll do it. And they got up here to the altar and they began jumping and they began shouting. And, and you want to know what happened? Everybody was like, what are they doing? Why are they jumping? They didn't know that they were setting the tone for the rest of us. And it wasn't until a couple of years later, it wasn't until like about a year later that the young people started joining, joining and the young adults started joining. But I'm here to tell all the adults, you need to take your place back. Like, you, I'm all for the young people, young adults being up here. I love it. They bring energy. But you're the leaders. Don't abdicate your role. Don't surrender. Eh, let them do it. No. We do it. We lead from the front. We show them. Men, we show our families. Men, we show our children. This is the way you praise God. This is the way you celebrate. This is the way you shout. This is the way you get your breakthrough. Come on, somebody praise him like you're inviting his presence into your life. It's not my personality. It's a, really? Well, maybe you need a new one. <laughs> How's your personality helping you with your problems? How's your personality helping you with your fears and your anxiety? How's your personality helping you with your struggles? Your personality won't help you at all, but I'll tell you what will. The key of David, praise will. So if you want to keep on struggling and you want to keep on in your misery, then don't, don't apply anything that I'm talking about today. But if you're willing to go to a next level and you're willing to see, you're wanting to see God do breakthroughs in your life, then you will adhere what I'm saying. You will listen and you will take a step of faith today. See, I, I wasn't supposed to preach this message. God told me before I went to Australia, he goes, I want you to preach on praise. And I was like, God, no, God, it's ready, set, grow. It's ready, set, go. That's three messages. I only got three messages. Ready, set, go. Serve, grow, and I think pray. Pray, serve, grow. God, that's it. And I, and I said, that's it, because today was supposed to be Vision Sunday. And I went to Australia. And while I was over there, God said, I told you to preach on praise. God, no, God. I already have my messages set. It's, it's, it's pray, it's serve, it's grow, and then Vision Sunday, and then boom, we go to the rest of the year. And God says, okay, go to Australia. <laughs> Crikey, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and I went down in there. I went down under. I went down to the, to the land down under. <laughs> And that last night of, of conference that we were there, the guy, Pastor Jason was speaking. He's a friend of our church. He was speaking, and he, he, he preached on the power of praise. And I'm listening there, and I'm like, okay, God. I said, I told you to preach on praise because it's the key to your people's breakthrough. And too many of us have been watching while others do the heavy lifting. You, you show up, and you're like... Well, let me see what they're going to do today up there. 
Huh. Let me see what songs you're going to, are they going to sing? Are they going to jump? Are they going to shout? Hey, maybe it's time for you to get engaged. Maybe it's time for you to start doing some of the lifting, some of the praising. You ready? Watch. Worship team, come on up or I'm, not, I'm never going to finish. Here's the last point. We have a reason. Everybody say reason. reason. We have a reason to praise God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same. Say that with me. Yesterday, today, and forever. One more time. Yesterday, today, and forever. So, so watch this. All I need to praise God. Listen, listen. All I need to praise God is a reason. I don't need a feeling to praise God. See, that's where, we, that's where we get it all wrong. We think, well, if I feel it, then I'll do it. If I feel like praising, then I'll, I'll pray. If I feel like shouting, then I'll shout. If I feel like clapping, if I feel like singing, if, if I get stirred up enough that, that, that these cement feet, come on. If I get stirred up enough where now I can get off the ground and, 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 and jump a little. If I, get, if I feel like shouting, I'll do it. But you don't do those things because you feel it. We should do those things because we have a reason. Come on. There are times, come on, there are times, I'm going to be honest, right, just be real talk. You ready for real talk? There are times where I don't feel like loving people in my life, but I have a reason to love them. So I don't have a feeling to praise God. Forget that. Forget the feeling. Do you have a reason? And you do. We all do. We have a reason. Here's the reason. We re the reason is, number one, for our yesterday, for what he's done. For what God, what is that? God done in your life? Has he healed you? Has he saved you? Has he forgiven you? Has he restored a marriage? Has he restored a family? Has he given you peace? Has he healed you from anxiety? Has, is there something that he's done in your yesterday? And you say, God, you're so good to me. God, I praise you for my yesterday. I praise you that you saved me, that you set me free, that you broke my addiction off of me, that you took anxiety off of me. I praise you for what you have done. I praise you for what you have done. Jesus name. Stand up. Stay standing up. I praise you. I praise you. You say, oh, Pastor, you're going to make a stand up for a long time. I've been standing for 40 minutes, so you, got, you can help me. I praise you for what you're doing today. Man, I look at my wife. I'm like, praise you, God, for my wife. I look at my children. Praise you for my children. I praise you, praise you, praise you, Lord. Pray, 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 praise. Pray. I wake up in the morning. I praise you, God. Oh, Lord, let everything that has breath, and I got breath. I'm breathing. My heart is beating. There's food on the table. There's a roof over my house. There's a car in my garage. There's blessing. There's favor. Come on, somebody. Praise God for what he's doing right now. I praise God for what he's doing. But here's, here's the high. You ready? You ready to take your praise to the next level? Ready? Right. Is you ready to take praise to the next level? Is you ready? Come on. Are you ready, brother? You ready? All right. I'm not only going to praise him for what he did. I'm not only going to praise him for what he's doing. But here's here's the here's the hardest the hardest level of praise, and that's to praise him for what he's going to do. Oh, you're not getting that. What happened to your joy? What happened to your juice? What happened to your jump? Who stole that from you? Come on. I praise him for what he did. I praise him for what he's doing. Mm. But I praise him for what he's about to do in my family, in my marriage, in my finances. Come on, praise him. Oh, yeah, 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 Watch this. What Paul did, what Paul did in Acts chapter 16, I don't have time to read it all. Acts chapter 16, Paul had been stripped, he had been beaten, he was humiliated, he was thrown in prison. And in Acts chapter 16, while he was in the dungeon, when he was in the lower innermost parts of the prison, in stock and chains, the Bible says around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing. Can I, can I give you a new translation? Paul and Silas were praying and praising. 
They were praying and praising. And the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. And all the doors immediately flew open and the chain of every prisoner fell off. Please, please follow me because this is the most important part of the message. Because we're, we're going we're gonna to experience a breakthrough right now. See, Rosie and I, we, we learned how to praise prophetically. In other words, we learned to praise believing for what God was going to do based on his promises. I'm not saying, Lord, I'm praising you, God. I'm praising you prophetically because I believe the numbers are 16, 23, 21, 35. No, 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 no. That's foolishness. I'm not saying you praise prophetically just on a whim. But based on what God has spoken in his word, based on a promise that he has made you, and God told us years ago when we first got married that we would have a family, that our family would serve the Lord, and that our family would build a church, and that our family would be a blessing. But can I tell you something? Hold on, hold on. Can I tell you what happened? It didn't happen. It didn't happen for a long time. Nine years. And for Latinos not having kids for nine years, that's an eternity. That was an eternity for us. And we would get sad and we would, we would cry because we couldn't have children and we didn't know why we weren't having children. But can I tell you something? I learned to praise God. And I praise God. I say, Lord, I praise God for my daughter that I'm going to have one day. And I praise God for the son that I was going to have one day. And I praise God for the church that I was going to pastor one day. And I didn't have it. I, I couldn't hold. I didn't hold faith. I didn't hold my daughter. I didn't hold my son. I, didn't, weren't hold, I wasn't holding my, ch my children in my arms. But I held it in my heart. And I praised like it was going to happen. And when I was... In Australia, I'll never forget, man, about six, 7,000 people in this convention center. Pastor Jason preached the message on praise, the power of praise. And this is where God says, you, you need to get back to your church. And you need to preach what I told you to preach. Yes, sir. I did. And I sent a, a, tweet, I sent a message to our team. We're moving from Australia. We're moving Vision Sunday. A week later, I got to preach another message. And when he said, when he said, to praise God, listen, he, he, he preached a message on praise. And at the end, he, I mean, six to 7,000 people absolutely going nuts. Nuts. And I, but when, when, when he released the people to praise, God spoke to my heart. He goes, I want you to praise me for what you need in that building. And guys, I told you this a couple months ago. We, need, we needed a miracle for, for the power panels because there's, there's, we, we, you know, you guys see the, the parking lots happening and the inside is happening. And we're going to have news on this next week, so don't miss it. But here's the thing. There's a possibility that we could have everything finished, the inside and the outside, and have no power there. Because the parts that we need, the power panels that we need, are like 40 weeks out. So we could have a building sitting there for 9 or 10 months. I mean, you talk about the ultimate tease. I'm like, I want to get in there. I want to get in that building. And so God says, praise me for what you need to that building. And I remember, I said, okay, I'm going to praise you. And I was like, and when he said go, I started jumping and shouting. I was going, power pedals! Power pedals! And I, like, I, people were like, what is he saying? Power panels. We get back on a Wednesday. Mm hmm and then on Friday, we get an email. We get an email from APS. And what does APS say? Hey, we're assigning a new project manager to your project. And this is the person. And I saw the name. I said, I know that person. Is that the person I think it is? And then at the end of the email, it says, coincidentally, this person used to attend your church when they were a child and grew up there with her grandma. I said, that's who it is. Now she's the project manager approving everything here. You guys, you guys, most of you won't know her because she comes to the early service, but she's the oldest, the longest tenured member in our church. There was another church before here, before we got here in 2006. She was here before that. She's been here actually since 19, about 77, 78. The church that was here before. Her husband, right, her husband helped build this building. Her husband helped build the, the old uh, handicap parking outside. And so when she came to church last Sunday, she had a big old smile on, 96 years old. She comes up, in the rain, in, no, in the rain. 
And she came up, big old smile, Pastor, you're not going to believe what happened. And I let her tell me. And, and she says, Jamie, Jamie's going to, is the project manager. And I said to her, Shirley, isn't that amazing? I said, the legacy, your husband built what we have today, and your granddaughter's helping us build what we have in the future. No, 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 no. That was, that was Friday. Or Sunday, excuse me, Friday, new project manager sat. Last Sunday, talked to Shirley. Monday or Tuesday, I get an email from Corey, our architect. Corey, everyone knows Corey in the back, right? Corey in the back, right? Corey in the house, hey, all right? Watch this. Corey, Corey sends an email. Hey, there's the potential that we may have found a panel. It just needs to be modified. But APS has to approve it. The project manager... And I said, well, I know the grandma. <laughs> Watch this. Oh, no, it's not even finished yet. So we submit the plans. And there's still things to work out. But we, guess what happened? We got, we got an approval. It says, yes, we can go ahead and make that work. And there's still details to work out. But listen, then we get an email or, that says, from the company that had the panel, he says, well, if APS is approving it, we're not going to sell it to you. We're going to give it to you. Yeah. Come on, somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. We're like we're in that building already. Woo! Yeah. Mm. But it started... That last night of conference, when I said, God, I'm going to praise you prophetically. I don't have those panels. I don't have the money for those panels right now. But God, I'm believing. I'm believing. I'm going to praise you for, for what you're going to do. And I jumped and I shouted. And I want you to know the next morning, I was a little sore. But can I tell you something? If it means that I get those panels, I'll jump even more. I'll shout even more. I'll praise even more. Come on, somebody. Come on. I know, hey, I, 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 I know we're going long, but, but now, now it's your turn. Now it's your turn to praise for, for, prophetically for what you need in your life. Praise God for the breakthrough. For, praise God for the provision. Praise God for what you're believing for. Praise Him like you already have it. It's already on you. It's, it's in your possession. Like Rosie and I prayed for our babies and our children. It's in our possession. Like we prayed for those panels. It's in our possession. It went from 40 weeks to you can have it now. Come on, somebody. It went from 40 weeks to you have to pay X amount. Guess what? I'll pay for it for you. You don't have to worry about it. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you're blessed by today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow our social media platforms in the description below. God bless.